to this lesson. I want to talk about technique. Uh, please don't misunderstand. I wasn't trying to show off, but sometimes you're in that sort of situation where a tune is called, in that case it was a 240 beat per minute rhythm changes, and somehow we have to survive it. And um, so we need to have a good technique, and of course we need to have good musical ideas. Not that I assume I do, but if uh, you get my meaning, I'm just trying to pass on some knowledge to you. And I used to always get very cramped um, uh, playing fast tempos, and that was because my right hand was uh, not correct. I used to rest on the uh, bridge with my little finger, and um, this would be like a, an anchor, and it was very bad for my right hand technique. So I developed later on, once I realized the problem, I developed more of a free hand on the on the right hand. Um, I brush the strings to sense where I am. And of course that means you uh, dampen the strings a little bit. Which actually is a good thing, it stops the strings feeding back and it can give you some extra attack. finger uh, as a rest then it'll be a, a new process to to learn to hold the pick a different way I mean maybe you're happy with your style but I'm just saying I had a problem when I played fast because my little finger was anchoring and uh, there was a lot of energy built up in in the right hand so um, the thing is of course we've got to coordinate the left hand and the right hand uh, let's talk about the left hand a bit um, We've um, learned about playing 
uh, phrases and uh, scales uh, on one, two strings. I mean, let's look, look at the two string concept again. If we're uh, playing in B flat, uh, this rhythm changes progressionals in B flat, so we need uh, this sort of a scale. <laughs> or with the um, chromatic note between the root and the major 7. So staying in that position, um, third position, we can reach all the notes alternate picking because now with eight notes uh, in the scale it's a balanced figure. So um, again it's not just about speed here but um, you need to practice things in a loop to be able to develop your technique. Combining that scale over two octaves So that's how come I can do this. The right hand, when you're playing speedy things like this, where you're picking everything, uh, I tend to tense up a little bit. My, my arm becomes a little stiff here, and it comes more from the elbow. It doesn't come from the wrist. The other thing is the sort of plectrum you use. Um, I used to use very small picks, and the problem with them was that uh, they would drop out of my hand as soon as I needed more uh, force with the right hand. And the other problem was that I kept uh, hitting the strings with the tips of my fingers. Now a bigger pick, this is a, actually a Spectra Plec, uh, 1.5 millimeter, but this sort of size, I'm sure you can see the size of it, I find better because I can hold it in a way that uh, my fingers don't touch the strings unless I want them to. Okay, so that's something you've got to work towards this independent of the left and the right hand, but uh, try to work on the right hand that you're um, holding your pick in a way that the, the fingers don't get in the way. Okay, another thing you might want to think about is um, the angle that the pick hits the string. Uh, I don't hit it flat on, I get a terrible sound like that. Hit it at an angle, like cutting down, brushing past the string. It's a less resistance, um, and of course that means you can speed it up um, if you should need to. Um, the other thing, very important of course, is the left hand uh, being able to stretch down. Uh, a good exercise um, I was shown playing seconds. tricky when you get onto the B string because the fingering changes. But in the bottom part of the fingering, uh, we have to get accustomed to stretching down with our first finger. Mm -hmm. 